Having not made the playoffs since 2015, the Toronto Blue Jays finally have something to show for years of rebuilding. By way of the draft, the Blue Jays have created a brand of baseball that will last for years to come. In 2020, the Blue Jays finished 32-28, and good enough to make the playoffs, at third in the AL East. They were eliminated by the Tampa Bay Rays in the wildcard series. They got swept. However, you're not really mad that they got swept. This is the first year they've made the playoffs, and this rebuild is still pretty early on. Once the core hits its prime, the Blue Jays are going to be scary. This year's war leader was Hinjin Ryu, the free agent signing, with a war of 3.0. Biggest surprise is definitely Teoscar Hernandez. Uh, he had a career high in home runs in a 60-game season. The free agent losses for the Blue Jays are devastating. They're losing two of their trade pieces from the most recent trade deadline in Robbie Ray and Taiwan Walker. Jonathan VR was also a trade piece, but he's not more than a big league infielder. Uh, then they're losing Ken Giles, who's one of the more elite closers in baseball. Huge loss for an already thin pitching staff. But in general, I think Blue Jays fans should be pretty happy with the way 2020 turned out. The front office went out and got players that they needed. They got a starting rotation. Granted, they're losing them in free agency, but I think at least one of those two guys will re-sign. But before we get into the details, as always, let's go into the prospects. Bleacher Report has this as the fourth best farm system in baseball before the draft. Uh, their top prospects, Nate Pearson, who's the sixth prospect in all of baseball, he should be healthy to start 2021 after struggling with some injuries in 2020. He was up at the big league club for a little while. While the results weren't that impressive, one thing's for sure, that fastball is one of the best fastballs in baseball. He hits the high 90s with ease. He's just got to work on those secondary pitches to watch those big blow-up innings. Their second prospect is 2020 draft pick Austin Martin out of Vanderbilt. He was projected at the second overall pick, and he fell to number five with the Jays, and you know that front office was elated to have another versatile infielder that with a really handy bat. He doesn't have a set defensive position yet, but that bat will definitely guarantee that he comes up sooner rather than later. Outside of those two, the farm system doesn't really have any outliers by any means. But a lot of these guys will see MLB time this year. Just a lot of MLB-ready prospects that won't be super impact players, but they'll definitely all play a key role on a playoff-ready team. But let's get into the MLB team, starting with the pitchers for once. In 2019, Hinjin Ryu was with the Dodgers and leading the league in ERA. In free agency, he came over to the Blue Jays, where he posted a 2.69 ERA across 67 innings. He had an ERA plus of 164 and a whip of 1.1. These aren't Cy Young numbers, but definitely the number one starter that this team needed. Outside of Taiwan Walker, who came over at the trade deadline, the rest of the starting rotation was pretty bad. Definitely something they need to take care of if they plan to compete in the future. The bullpen was mediocre outside of Rafael Dolis, who pitched 24 innings of 1.5 ERA ball. He had an ERA plus of 296, struck out 31 in those innings. It's no secret that this pitching staff is the problem and probably holding them back from success in the future, so if they really want to do something in the playoffs, they're going to need to add a lot of starting pitching, and at least one or two more electric arms that they can rely on in late innings. Moving on to the offense, let's start with Bo Bichette. He was injured to start the season, but ended up playing in 29 games. He had 123 at-bats, posted a 301 batting average, but only a 328 on on-base percentage. In 2019, he posted numbers that were equal to Fernando Tatis, and I think they both have similar projectability. Boba Shett doesn't see the ball as well as Tatis, though. He only walked five times to 27 strikeouts in 2020. These aren't concerning numbers in such a small sample size, though. Bichette should be not only a star in Toronto, but a star of the entire league. Then there's Vlad Jr., who I'm honestly a little concerned about. As a 21-year-old, he hit nine home runs and 33 RBIs across all 60 games this season. Had a batting average of 262 and an on-base percentage of 329. But I think he can be so much more. If you look at this video of him running out this triple, he just looks unhealthy. If he wants to reach his high ceiling, he's going to have to take off some pounds to really improve his mobility. But don't let that distract you from his 500-foot home run potential. Just five years ago, this team looked very different. Touting MVP candidates Josh Donaldson, Troy Tulowitzki, and Jose Bautista, and Cy Young candidate David Price. It's been a long time coming to get to where they are now. Outside of Bichette and Guerrero, they have other young stars on the team that can make just as much of an impact. Kevin Biggio got on base 37% of the time in 2020. 
And all the guys I just named said that Lourdes Gurriel Jr. has more potential than all of them. The offense is certainly sustainable, but the pitching is lacking. Outside of Nate Pearson, they have nothing on the way. It's up to the front office to sign or trade more starters because you don't want to go into game two of a series and then you say, okay, Tanner Rourke, you got the game. You don't feel confident doing that. But by making the playoffs in 2020, the Blue Jays put the league on notice, and for good reason. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The State of Baseball. If you liked the video, follow us on Twitter at LandmarkBBL or subscribe. Have a good one, guys.